shy to preach right now, God, that they bow down to you and that they and that you give them the word to preach, Jesus. I pray that every chain is broken in this room, Jesus. I pray that everybody bows down to you and every heart is open, Jesus. I pray that when we go out to the to homeless people, God, that even if they're atheists, that they bow down to you, Jesus. I pray that you give us a wonderful day today, God, and that you give us a wonderful word and wonderful scriptures to tell them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's amazing. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing, Adriana. Thank you for praying. Praise yeah. God. This is awesome. We got another evangelist here. Her name is Faith, and she is nine, nine, seven. Uh -huh. She's seven years old, and she's been going out with us for how long now? Since she's been that big. So when someone who says, I have a child, I cannot come, there is no child care provided, bring him with you. Mm -hmm. Faith, do you want to say something? My mom, she was sick and I prayed. Two weeks later, I think, she was healed. Isn't that beautiful? Raising up the generation in the ways of the Lord that they will not depart. Thank you, Faith, so much. Praise Jesus. Jesus. All right, so let's just worship the King, and then we're going to have Pastor Tony share a powerful word from the Lord. So, Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you, God, for everything you're doing, God. And, Father, if there is any more fear here in this room, God, we pray it will be lifted off now in the name of Jesus. And it must go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you for your presence, and we just worship you here today.
new father today, Jesus. Father, Lord, our hearts, they melt with yours, Father. They become one. And today, Father, our hearts, Lord, they are stretched. Outstretched, our arms are outstretched for you. You're the reason, God. <laughs> yes, you're the reason, God. You're the reason, God, that we are here. You're the reason, God. You're the reason, God. You're the reason, God, that we go from here. <laughs> your love, your joy, they stir our hearts. Your love, your peace. They flow through us today, oh God. You're the reason. Yes, you're the reason. Yes, you're the reason. You're the reason. We shine for you. Yes, you're the reason. Now we can say he's the reason for your life today. He's the reason. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. You're hired. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. I wish I had that when I was starting my churches back <laughs> Back at the time, I did. God did great, give us grace to start a couple of churches down in Brazil, South, South America. And uh, it was me and the guitar, and the guitar and me. <laughs> so, but uh, it's good to be here. My name's Tony, Pastor Tony here. I'm one of the pastors here on staff, along with Pastor Ooh. Ken, Pastor Juan, and other people that God's blessed us with. And so it's a privilege to share and bring a little perspective. Sometimes uh, perspective is good, and uh, we want to share a little bit about that. I thank God for Arena's life. And... Uh, her, uh, how God has raised her as a, as an evangelist figure probably for our church yes. because uh, there is a stirring in her heart to see the body of Christ equipped or perfected in this area. Amen. And uh, when you put it in perspective, Ephesians 4 talks about the five uh, offices or the five, some people say the fivefold ministry. Uh, but truthfully, ministry is service, and we're all serving, so we're all ministering, mm -hmm. and so forth. But in perspective, it means that there's five emphasis that the church needs, and together they represent Christ. When Christ was on earth, uh, he alone had all five. But when he ascended to heaven, it says he gave gift to, men's, to men, and some to the apostles, prophets, evangelists, uh, shepherds, and teachers. Uh, the word pastor is the word Latin. It's the Latin word we use, and it means shepherds. And so we, we need those five emphases, and we have people that clearly depict what they are. Uh, and Irina, you depict the evangelist very well because you stir us to good works in the sense of going out. And uh, we, the body needs that. Like the body needs the shepherds that stir to take good care of people. We need them to stir up and teach the body how to take care. Because biblically, who does the ministry is Ephesians 4, 11. It says, I would, I'll just say, when he, when he ascended to heaven, he gave gifts to men, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and shepherds, uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Which means... The work of the ministry is not done by the pastor or the evangelist or the apostle or the prophet. The work of the ministry is done by the saints. Are you a saint? I thought saints were just those Catholic. Uh, <laughs> saints means separated, means pure, something that was set apart. We are, were all set apart. So you are a saint. It's a commandment. We're supposed to be holy. We're supposed to be saints. Same word. So, the uh, we're, we're, what we're doing here, in, in we're equipping the body, and you and me, so that we can be better evangelists. 
Now, somebody said preach. I think it was a young girl. Uh, preach can scare people. How many are scared when I say, go preach the gospel? <laughs> That's the, you know, most people, even the fivefold, they don't all preach. They're supposed to teach. Preachers are a special gifting. But preach the gospel means announcing. Can you announce somebody, hey, they're getting married. When you announce something, you're, you're telling something with excitement, right? How about you go to the, let's go tell the good news with Seth. Yeah, I got some really good news, you know. That, that really won't make a difference. That's why we announce it, and the announcing means preaching. We are excitedly sharing something. And so that's why uh, this putting here, so that, we're putting this here on the table so we can see where does this fit in? How come the rest of the church is in here? Probably because there's a more evangelistic tilt on you or God touch your heart to be here. But we're supposed to infect them so they can also add this to their lifestyle. But they need some people that are, are go get go, uh, go get us. There we go. And so think about this. Uh, they can say, well, I'm, I'm quiet. I like to stay and just evangelize, you know, just love on people, be their friends. Like, Bill, you did a wonderful job. I know. What a, what a wow. great work. So, I told you you inspired me. Yes. <laughs> so the, what it means is some people just, I, I just like to be friends. And eventually, if they're really hungry, I'll tell them about Jesus. <laughs> and that's fine for, you know, some temperaments. If you want to learn how to share the gospel through your temperament, there's a book called Contagious by Bill Hybels. Really good. And so the extro extrovert people can use that approach with, which is pretty much in your face. That's kind of, that, that's what that's for. And then the timid ones can do it this way. So it's pretty cool. But um, going back here, this group here, or us, uh, we represent those that get to go out. And when we go out this way, rather than just being a friend for a long time, there is a chance explosion might happen. There is a chance that miracles and signs will happen because the Bible says these signs shall follow those that believe. And if they believed, what, what precedes that is in Mark 16. It starts with go into all the world and announce or preach the good news to all people. And so if you believe, then you're going to announce. If you don't believe, you're not going to announce. But if you believe, then those signs will follow. So when we go out here on the streets, why go on the streets? Did you ever think of why can't we just, like, you know, just win one by one? When you go on the streets, there's a demand on the supernatural. There's a demand on the gifts of the Spirit. There's a demand for things to happen. So if you like things to happen, going on the streets is your chance. Because then... God better show up because we don't have other, nothing else but God to offer to people, His love. And so we move, and, and so it's kind of like the Green Berets or the Navy Seals or whatever you like to be. Uh, the Avengers, no, whatever, that's not, anyhow. I'll, I'll let kids know what that is, okay. So, uh, so when we go out, supernatural power happens. So we are the, we're, we, we're, the, we're the part of the body that likes the roller coasters, that likes the fun. Amen? Amen. And we draw people, and you've got to come on this ride because miracles will happen. Okay, so here's a quick um, couple things here. There's a verse, and I'm going to piggyback on it since Bill opened the way here. 2 Corinthians 5.16, if somebody could open it. I'm going to ask you to read, one, so one of you will read it for us, 2 Corinthians 5, 16. This is a secret that will help, it should help all of us. Uh, it makes all the difference. Uh, when you, and I learned this from another brother who also has a church that's in the hundred thousands. No, but uh, this is great. When he goes out witnessing, he uses this verse here. So who found it? Pastor Kenneth. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have, we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Okay. 
Does that make sense? That's kind of, let's read it again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him, thus no longer. Okay, it's kind of complicated the way the words sound, but all it means is Paul decided that from that point on, no one, you know what no one means in the Greek? <laughs> that he's not going to look at no one, not just the Christians, but even the non-Christians, he's not going to look at them according to the Oh, that means when I look at people, even if they're in the world and they're all funny and full of extra stuff on them, you know, I'm not looking at them according to the flesh from now on. I'm going to look at them according to the Spirit. Wow. And so even though they saw Jesus, because they're back in Jesus' time, to say even though we saw Jesus in the flesh, we don't even look at Jesus according to the flesh anymore. We begin to see with supernatural eyes. Talked about the Avengers here. We got the x-ray eyes that go, that's what Superman, you know. You know, we begin to see people with eyes of who they are in Christ, even though they don't have any idea yet, but we can see it. We can see them healed. We can see them saved. We can see them apostles, prophets. We can call it out because we no longer see anyone that's why I can hang around with Ken, my buddy, because I don't look at the flesh. And all his funny joke. I mean, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I just think of him as my friend. But we see each other in the spirit. That's why we can get along so good. Amen? <laughs> Especially he with me. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> so, and I got excited. I got to watch my time. So I need to watch. Okay. So I just got started. Okay. Here. That's the main key when you go out. And I like how Brother Bill brought out, find the one, and then spirit time. I see this as a giant in the faith. The next Billy Graham, maybe. Who do, how do you know? So we begin to see him through the eyes. Of course, we'll see his need. We'll see areas that he needs, maybe healing. We'll, we'll, we'll see that, but we also see who he becomes. If we can do that. And it's a lot less scary because you already see it. You already know what's going to happen. So why not? All right. So here's, here's another couple verses for us here. 1 John 2, verses 12 through 14. Uh, I'm just going to mention it because I think most have read it. 1 John 2, 12 through 14. It's uh, the last apostle that was alive, uh, Apostle John. He writes the three phases of a Christian. He writes, I write unto you little ones, or little children, or infants, or babies. Depends on your translation. Because you know the Father. And I write unto you young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you. And, and then eventually it will repeat itself again and say, And you have overcome the wicked one. And will say twice, I write unto you fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. And so he'll mention it twice, pretty much for the three sizes. You're either a babe, or you're a young man, an adolescent, or a teenager. And then finally, you are not an adult, a father. And so, there is a difference. The reason why most translations will say father, because the Greek says father. You can become an adult, but you can never be, you can also choose to never be a father. That's why, spiritually speaking, Spiritual maturity has to do with fathering and not just being a know-it-all and I know about everything. It's when you begin to reproduce yourself and form other people and create a legacy to be carried forth of the people that you personally affect. So, in this case here, uh, what do fathers do? We're talking about fathers. Fathers do two things. They either beget or they adopt. Okay? So a beget means that you're in the process that made life come forth and conception and so forth. Or you're an adopter, one that takes on a child and takes the father role of bringing him up so he can become one day a father himself. So with those two aspects here, 
That's what makes a person a father. When we go out on the streets, we're going on the first aspect of fathering, which is we're up to beginning. We're going to beget. Probably somebody else planted a seed a while ago, and we're going to reap it, but we're still in the begetting phase. People are going to come to know Jesus if they don't know Jesus. Okay, and that's where the process begins. So the process begins in the street. Now, some people are so blessed that they even evangelize their shadow. Do, anybody, do you guys know anybody like that? That kind of just evangelize their shadow, you know, like Daniela or Marina or Jenny? That's just the way they are, you know? Can they care for everybody they're gonna win to the Lord? No, because they're winning like dozens a day. I don't know how many a day, but they're winning. That's part of their drive. So, in their case, they have to be like a good Samaritan. You get them, you give them a little bit. You find the guy in Jericho that got all banged up and he's laying there and he's just almost dying and you come and you rescue him. You kind of clean him up real quick. You put him on your donkey or whatever, back then it was a donkey. And, uh, but you leave him at a place where he can be cared for, but it has your personal investment making sure that uh, that person is going to be cared for. So some people that win a lot of people for Jesus, they don't have time, but they have to find small groups or people that can take care of them for them. So that that happens, but they keep taps with the leader. Hey, I paid you for this, you know, kind of a thing. Anyhow, so that's an idea there for those that win a lot. Most of us, though, will have to take care of our own kids, okay? Because we have the time. We should. You want your friend of the Lord? You're the mama, or you're the daddy, you know? So uh, we gotta remember that. Okay, last, uh, last verse here that I'm gonna bring up. Luke 1, 7, 127. One, Luke 127, this kind of confirms the, the part about signs and wonders. Luke 127 talks about uh, Jesus is commenting upon John the Baptist that he kind of fulfills this uh, prophecy where in Malachi 4 it says uh, that God would send his servant in the spirit and power of Elijah and he would turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons. And in Malachi it says the sons of the, the hearts of the sons to the fathers so that God would not come and spite the world with a curse. But in the New Testament it doesn't say that. The New Testament says I'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons and the hearts of, and the, of the disobedient to the knowledge of the just. In other words, of the not saved to become saved. So to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. So Jesus explains it on the spiritual side. And so the Bible doesn't say pray for the harvest. Pray for them to get saved. The Bible says the harvest is ripe. Ready, plentiful, and ripe. Pray for the labor. Somebody talk about the labor pain here, but it's laborers are, in, you know, they also have labor pains. But laborers are those that go out like us today. Pray for them that they would have the willingness and the desire. And they also said there's good wages. In that phrase, that stood out from I was reading it. Now there's good wages for those that win souls. There's great wages from God. So anyhow, but it says to pray for them. And so the problem isn't the sons that are out there lost. The problems are the laborers that haven't woken up yet. And what wakes up a father to turn his heart towards his lost spiritual son is the demonstration of spirit and power. And so... We have to have a demonstration of spirit and power because that will ignite the Father's heart, both in us and those around us. And when you come to a person that doesn't know God, you're not just with human eloquence convincing him. Paul says, I didn't come with human eloquence, persuasive words of men. I came with demonstration of spirit and power. And so that means that you're doing something up here that the inner man of him say, hey, there's something about this guy, this lady that's calling me. It's calling me to an area that was dead. Spiritual's awakened. 
We need the power of God so we can awaken the spirit men and the people. So are you ready to awaken the spirit side that's dead in them? You need demonstration and power and that will go, whoa, I knew there was something more. I knew there was a God. I knew he loves us. So that's necessary. And so the last thing I want to do here today is show you something. Now, how are we doing for Tommy? Because I get excited. And, uh, okay. So, how many can give me three more minutes? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times three. That's about, I got about 15 more minutes. There we go. <laughs> seven times three is 21. Anyhow. So, here's a little book we call One to One. Uh, we actually have quite a few of these books. This, this one would cost you because it costs the church. It costs, it cost, it ends up being three bucks. And it's great. Let me tell you about what it is. Then I got a surprise for you. This book here is what you usually sit down with a person as soon as they receive the Lord or it teaches you how to pray so a person can receive the Lord. So there's the prayer of salvation in here to start up with. Then there are six lessons that will help put foundations into a brand new person. Six lessons. The first one is salvation. So they can know all about salvation. So they can be sure that they're saved and it's not by works. And it's going to teach them that. Then it's going to talk about uh, lordship of Jesus right from the start. You teach them that he's either Lord of all. Or Lord of or, 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 There you go. That's it. He's Lord of all or not Lord at all or something like that. Okay. And so then it's repentance, then it's baptism. It put in the foundations. Now, the good thing here is you don't give this all at once. You keep it and you meet with him for six weeks. Somebody did. And he goes over every week with one of the lessons. And there's some homework for him. And so with that, by the time six weeks go by, that person already is captivated. He's already got a mentor. And now if you can't finish taking care of someone else, you can hand it to so because they already are established. This book here is free if you download it as an app. All you have to do is go on your app store there. And I know uh, an Android is called Play Store. What do you call that? Yeah, Play Store. Yeah, something like that. It's free. You download it. It's one to one. And it's in English, Spanish, Russian, Chinese, any language you want. So you can, the person can, they oh, don't speak English good. No. So you can, what language do you speak? So you, they can read it in their language. And the cool thing is, this is what you, once they're born, you can't leave them dangling. This is how you start meeting. Hey, can we meet for coffee? And I, I'd like to share with you something. You can download it on their app and on your app. And once you do that, then you've got something to meet and talk about. And it's not so much what they're going to learn here. It's what the Holy Spirit will reveal when you sit down with them during, during those times. So I want to encourage you guys, once we meet with them, you get their phone number if they allow you to. Say, we'd like to have some coffee with you. Let's meet up. Or eat something. You know, there's different places you can eat, Brazilian food, all kinds of food. So uh, make it a point not just to lead them to the Lord, but to also bring them so they're established. And then we're going to be introducing this to the church uh, very shortly on Vision Night for leaders and so forth. But we want to encourage you that way. So um, I think I'm out of time, so I probably left my mic playing right here. <laughs> so, Irina, here we go. All right. We're good? You're good. Okay. I'm good to what? To sit down or to stand up? <laughs> okay. So basically, what I wanted to do is this. I, I think Bill did such a terrific job. We, if you're a man, see yourself as a father. If you're a woman, see yourself as a mother, a spiritual mother to the people you're going to reach. That's the heart of God. That's looking like Jesus. I don't just bring people to the knowledge. If I can't walk with them, I introduce them to someone who can. Okay? But if I can, 
That's one more that God's saying, I promised you the nations of the world. That's your inheritance. Pick them up, take care of them, and send them forth. They're part of your ministry now. If you could see, people are actually part of your network of sons and daughters that God's going to create, create. And if we could just see. I was talking with a Russian girl. I don't see her now. Is that you? Someone had glasses. I'm a Russian girl, I'm speaking. And uh, I, was, I was saying, and she was in, she's working in investments. And uh, I, I did investments myself. I did, got the Series 6 license, a few things. I want to say this. You know that in heaven, the streets are, are made of gold? And gates are pearl gates and all those beautiful things? Of all the things in heaven, what's the most valuable one? Souls are the most valuable one because they cost the blood of Jesus. No, no other price was as high as souls. So, how big is your spiritual portfolio of investment? How many souls are in your portfolio? Portfolio. So that's something to keep in mind. God wants you to have not just a small portfolio, but one that grows exponentially. But for that to happen, Second Timothy two two. Paul tells his son Timothy in the faith, he says, Timothy, what you heard from me amongst many witnesses, entrust to faithful men that are able to teach others. That is Paul, Timothy, faithful in others. That's the 4G Christian, the four generation Christian. And so we want to encourage you, increase your spiritual portfolio of all the souls because they're the most valuable thing. Amen? Make it exponential. Invest. God bless you. Oh, we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, I got so excited. Thank you, Lord. Father, I do thank you today. I thank you because you're opening our eyes. Most of all, you're opening our hearts. So we can just right now begin to feel, Father, the conception of the people that you want to bring into your kingdom. And you're going to use personality, Tony. You're going to use personality, George. You're going to use personality, Adriana. You're going to use each one of our personalities to convey the Jesus they need to hear today. They need to hear the Jesus with your personality. Father, today in the name of Jesus, Father, give us, Lord, a heart that says, God, give me the nations of the world. Give me for my inheritance. I want Haitians in my portfolio. I want Japanese in my portfolio. I want Russians, Brazilians, Americans, everything. I want them all in my portfolio, Lord. I want to have heavenly dividends, Lord, for eternity, Lord, for eternity, God. I want to love, Lord. I want to breathe, Father. I want to call forth the spiritual sons and daughters, Father. I want to call them out in the name of Jesus. Father, give me your love. Father, give me your heart. Father, give me your love. Father, give us your love today. Father, give us your heart today. Father, give us your mind today. Let us see ahead of time. Father, even right now, I pray for words of knowledge to begin to come. I pray, Father, for words of wisdom, Lord. Things that will come, Lord, that when we go out, Father, we can, Lord, draw from that, Lord. Father, people, Lord, maybe someone will feel some kind of funny pain in their body. That's because Jesus might want to heal somebody today with a certain pain. And God's just localizing. He's just showing you where it's going to be so that we can move in words of knowledge today. Father, we declare in Jesus' name. We declare in Jesus' name more signs and wonders will follow today. We release all the fullness, Father, the gifts of the Spirit, Father, so that we can use, Father, the words of knowledge, of healing, Father, gift of faith, Lord. Oh, Father, my whatever gift is necessary, let it be available, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Give us your heart, oh God. Give us your heart, oh God.
challenging to replace this kind of worship with our show words. <laughs> going to be our best. So why don't you stand up, stand up and, and try to reach a, a fruit like it's two inches away from you. Put the tip of your toes. Hopefully, like an encounter with Jesus, all those masks, masks will drop. Okay? Yeah. So let me ask a, a genuine a question that I want you your genuine answer. I want you to be honest. How many of you feel uncomfortable talking to somebody that you don't know? Let me see your hands. If, if you are okay, if you are, that's fine. Okay? Uncomfortable. uncomfortable. I can't wait to speak British. How many of you feel uncomfortable <laughs> approaching somebody? It's very uncomfortable because what happens is that we have so much pride inside of you. It's hidden somewhere that we don't want to be rejected. We don't want to look bad. We don't want to look, wow, what is this guy saying? So that's one of the biggest lies that the enemy has planted in our hearts. That we have to be perfect in order to be a good Christian. It doesn't have to be that way. Jesus didn't pick up professional. He picked up smelly, stinky fishermen to bring uh, the message. So if you get close to me, you are going to smell a fisherman. <laughs> I'm stinky today. I'm being sweaty. I bought this sweater. It's a three hundred and fifty dollar sweater. Okay, and I bought it for twenty five. So and I bought it at Forever Twenty One because I want to be young forever. <laughs> So, so, even though I'm in the early 30s, I still look like 20 something, right? <laughs> Let me tell you how God created each one of us. And uh, hopefully at the end of these 15 minutes, you're going to leave this place thinking, hmm, I have what it takes after all. So the, the Lord created the earth before he created the humankind. See, there's a picture there. He created the earth. And then he put on the earth all the nutrients, minerals, uh, all the all what the human uh, race was going to need. It's a kind of foggy picture. <laughs> it's a spiritual picture, you don't see it. <laughs> so when he created the earth, he, he, before he created man, because his idea was 